In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to code up a Lego Sumo bot using your Spike Prime robot kits. Now, for those of you that are unaware of what a Sumo bot is, uh, it's just like a Sumo wrestler, but in robot form. So to have a Sumo bot battle, what you need to do is you need to get a circular ring, much like the one you see on your screen here. Usually they're black and white, um, and what we do is we put two robots into the ring. So there are two Sumo wrestlers, and they just go head to head with each other, having a bit of a push and shove battle. And your job is to push your opponent outside of that ring. If you can get your opponent outside of the ring, then you will be declared the winner. Okay, so let's get started on this little project by loading up the LEGO Education Spike app and making yourself a new project. Give your project a name first of all, such as Sumo Bots. Click on Word Blocks and click on Create and we are ready to get started on making our, or coding up our Sumo Bot. Now make sure you have made up your Sumo Bot and connected it to your computer either via Bluetooth or the white cable that's supplied in your kit. Once connected via Bluetooth and you can see here that I've got my A and B motors plugged in there, my distance sensors in port C and my color sensors in port D. You don't have to have the same as me, um, so just be aware yours might be a little bit different in the coding when we get to these sections in a moment. All right, now to start our program, the first thing we always do is we go to our pink movement section and just set our movement motors up. So tell the computer, or tell the robot as well, which ports have our wheels plugged into it. And as you can see at the top here, I've got mine plugged into A and B. Okay, now for some unknown reason, I've mentioned this every time we've done a tutorial, we need to switch the A and a B around to B and A. So I need to set my movement motors to B plus A so that my robot drives forward. Okay, so if your robot's driving backwards, just come in here and click on the letters to switch them around, and that will get your robot, hopefully, driving in the right direction. Now, once you've set your movement motors up, the first thing we need to do to start a sumo bot battle is wait for three seconds. So in your control tab down here, grab out the wait one second and make it three seconds. Now, just to explain why we do that, when you start a battle, you'll have a robot on one side of the board over here on the left and another robot on the right side of the board. So they're basically opposite each other. One part of the robot must be touching the white line. That's the general rule on how you start a battle. Now when you push your um, button to run your program, you have a three second wait, which gives the owners of the robots time to step back from the board. They need to get at least a meter back from the board. And that three seconds is what that's all about. So once you've stepped back from the board, the robots can then commence their battle. So the first thing I like to get my robot to do, once it's um, waited that three seconds, is to drive in to the center of the board. And once it's in the center of the board, it can then start looking for its opponent to have its um, sumo battle with. So what we want to do is get our robot just to drive straight ahead, flat out to the center of the board. Now the board is a meter in width. So if we want to get in the middle, we probably need to drive about 50 centimeters to get to the center of the board. So we could look in our movement tab and do that, but there is a block of code that I want to access that is not in this movement section. And the way we access more code, so more advanced pieces of coding blocks, we need to go right down the bottom left-hand corner of our app to these funny black and white shapes with a plus sign um, in the corner. It's called Show Block Extensions. And if you click on that, you've got all these extensions that you can add into the app to allow your robot to do even more things than it usually does. And what we want to do is add in more movement blocks. So press the little tick button there so that we've got more movement blocks added in. And just hit the cross at the top to close that window off. Now to find the more movement blocks, so the more advanced movement blocks, you need to scroll down the left hand side here, all the way to the bottom, and you'll see another pink section that says more movement. And you've now got some more advanced movement blocks for moving your robots. Okay, now the one we're looking for is the third one down here. Looks like this. Okay, now we're going to change the settings. Instead of moving right 30, we're just going to move straight. So we're just driving straight into the middle of the sumo ring. And 50 centimeters is what I said before. That gets us into the middle of the board. So we're halfway across the board now. And we want to get in there as soon as possible so we can start looking for our opponent really quickly. So we want to go at 100% speed. So that's the start of my program. We wait three seconds and then drive straight into the middle of the board at 100% speed. Okay, so our robot's in the middle of the board. Now what we wanna do is start looking for our opponent. Okay, so I'm gonna do some um, blocks of code here and just put them out off to the side here separately and we'll join them all together in just a moment. 
Okay, so uh, we need a couple of if else's to do all this in. So there's an if then else and an if then else. We're going to use two of them. So let's start uh, with this one over here. Actually, before we start looking for our opponent, we might do something else first. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for the white line. So what happens if our robot senses the white line that runs around the outside of the ring? Well, that means he's getting close to falling off the board. So we want to get him away from that white line. Okay, so I'm going to go to my sensors here, and I'm going to look for the color white first of all. Once my robot detects that color white, I want him to move back into the black section, so back into the board. And to do that, I'm going to go back down to my more movement blocks and pull out the same block we used a moment ago, just over here on the left. And we're going to move straight again. And this time we're going to do it for one rotation. So we're just going to do one rotation of the wheels. And it's going to be at minus 100% speed, which means he's going backwards. Okay, so we're going backwards. 100% speed for one rotation of the tires and that should be enough to get our robot back into the playing area and away from the edge of the board. Okay, so that's all I'm going to put on that section. Now down on this if then else statement, what I'm going to put in next is another sensor and it's going to be the eyes, so the distance sensor. What we're going to do now is look for our opponent. So. If our eyes spot something closer than, you know, for this I'm going to put about 60 centimeters. Remember our board's a meter wide, so we don't want to look any further than 100 centimeters. Um, I'd put it a little bit less because there is every chance your robot might spot somebody's legs or maybe the legs of a table nearby. So if you go too big, yeah, your robot might see something that it shouldn't and just run off the board. So what we want to do is Put a little bit less than 100 centimeters, so I like about 60 centimeters. That will make him see most of the way across the board. Okay, so if our eyes spot something closer than 60 centimeters, then what are we going to do? So what do we do when we see our opponent? Well, there's two things I want to do. First one is just a cosmetic kind of thing. I want the eyes to light up. Okay, so I'm going to light up my eyes by turning them on. So there's your little eyes there. That's just the color sensor. Oh, sorry, the distance sensor eyes turning on. And I'm going to get him moving straight at 100% speed. So, um, which one are we looking for here? This one right here. So we're going to move straight at 100% speed. That means we're just going flat out at our opponent. So as soon as we see our opponent, turn those eyes on and just go flat out straight at him. We're going to try and barge him off the board at our max speed. All right, so that's that little section done. The last thing I want to do, which goes in this little else section down the bottom here, is the code for how we're going to look for our opponent. Okay, how we're going to know where our opponent is. And what I like to do is just spin around in a bit of a circle looking for my opponent. So there's a few different ways you can spin around in the circle there. You can do your um, spin on the spot turns, or you can actually start driving around in a circle shape looking for your um, opponent. So it's up to you which one you use there. I like to drive around in a circle shape, so what I'm going to do first of all is just turn my lights off because that will mean I cannot see anything at the moment, so that will just be an indication that I haven't spotted anything at the moment. And back to my movement, I'm going to start moving right at 75 degrees. So that's going to start making my robot move in a circular shape, so he's going to be scouring the outside, oh, well, not the outside, but it's going to be scouring the board, which is a circle shape as well, for an opponent. And I want him doing this fairly slow. So I'm going to set my movement speed to, I'd say 20%. Remember, if you spin around too quickly, your opponent, oh, sorry, it'll be hard to see your opponent. The eyes just won't pick up the opponent because you're spinning too quickly. But if you spin slowly, it gives your robot time to send out that ultrasonic signal and it will give it time to come back to the robot's eyes and say, okay, there's something there in front of me, so I can now attack it. All right, so that's all the code we need for that section. So I'm going to put that inside the else statement there. So this is how our code is looking at the moment. And we want to wrap this up inside of a forever loop. So in your events tab, go and grab a forever loop and put it all inside a forever loop. And that can now snap on to our original code over there. I'll just zoom back a bit so you can see all of that. Okay, there it is. 
that is my code for a sumo bot. Okay, so when the program starts, we set up our motors. So there are our movement motors that move the wheels. We wait that three seconds and then we drive into the center of the board as quickly as possible. Once in the center of the board, we are doing these three things forever. So we're always looking out for the white line. If we ever sense the white line, then we need to move back at 100% speed for one rotation of the wheels. Um, we're also looking for our opponent. If we sense our opponent, which is going to be less than 60 centimeters away, then we turn our little lights on and we start moving straight at him at 100% speed, hoping to push him off the board. Uh, and then finally down the bottom here, this else section, this is just what we're going to be doing when we're looking for our opponent. So our lights will be off. Uh, we're just moving to the right at 75 degrees with a very slow movement speed of 20%. That will just have a circling around the board quite slowly until we sense our opponent. And that's it. Okay, so good time to go and test it now. Put it onto a sumo board. Press play. And see how it goes. All right, so our robot wait three seconds, drive into the center of the board, and then he just starts turning around looking for an opponent. Now I'll put my hand in front of him here. He drives towards me hits the white line and goes back. Then he starts searching around again. He can't see anything within 60 centimeters. If I put my hand back, goes at me again. But when he hits the white line, he knows he can't go any further and just drives back into the board. All right, so hopefully um, yours worked as well as mine did. It is now probably time to get a mate who also has a sumo bot and go and have a practice battle and see if it works. So I'm gonna turn mine on now with a friend and we'll see how our sumo bots go. Let's give it a crack. All right, so you can see that was two very simple robots, but they did the job. Um, one robot there pushed the opponent off the board quite easily. All right, so that is what a sumo bot battle is all about. Usually it's best of three, um, three battles, and then whoever wins two of them is obviously going to be crowned as the winner. Um, this is just a basic starting point too. You can add other bits and pieces of code as you feel necessary, uh, but this is at least the basics down pat to get you going with your sumo bot battle. You might want to add some different contraptions onto yours, like a scoop that might lift up to flip your opponent, for example. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that you can add into your program. So go and get creative, go and have a bit of fun, and enjoy the sumo bot battles. They are um, a whole heap of fun when you do it with your mates. Okay, I'll catch you in another video tutorial soon.